Arlington Finance Committee to order. Peter, are we all up to date on minutes? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to bring it tonight. No, we're not. Oh. Well, okay, why don't you send them to the four of us and oh, cool. All it is is the minutes. I'm proving the minutes from the previous meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I think between myself, Charlie, Dick, and Alan, we can, we can handle it. Okay. Okay, reserve fund transfers. Uh, let's use the summary page on the handout. Uh, Mr. Manager, could you briefly go through each? Yeah, absolutely. Good evening. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly point out there's been uh, multiple iterations of the document that's before you and I just want to point out some of the changes that were made from the initial distribution last week. Uh, so last week we sent out uh, this packet that was almost in its entirety. Today there was emailed out an update that added in a transfer uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals salary budget from the Reserve Fund in the amount of $1,230. Uh, and then uh, there was a misunderstanding between uh, Sandy Pooler and David Good about the need for uh, a reserve fund transfer for information technology, excuse me, information technology. I actually got that uh, on my way back over here today and had a dialogue with David. Uh, so you'll see the addition of a need to transfer into uh, information technology expense, $56,753, which is recommended also to come from the reserve fund. Uh, so that, those are the two additions from what uh, you had previously been provided. Uh, do you want me to go uh, item by item? Yeah, that? I okay. go, why don't we go through one item at a time? Uh, I'll ask for you know questions on that item, um, and then we'll go to the next. Slide. Great. Uh, first item, I'll, I'll go by the order of the memo if, uh, if that works for everybody. Uh, is a four hundred and seventy nine dollar transfer to the board of selectmen's office, uh, and that's uh, obviously a very small amount, but it's in relation to uh, the buyout costs of a long term employee who retired from the selectmen's office. Do you want to stop on each one, did you say? Any questions? Okay. Next request is a multi-part request from the comptroller. Uh, the first is a transfer request of $10,000 from the comptroller's uh, salary budget to his expense budget to cover costs uh, related to restructuring security features and I, I would actually say some of the permissions that we have in the Munis system. Um, so to transfer actually interdepartmental again salary to expense to cover those costs. Uh, and then the comptroller's second request, which I believe um, he's had at least one, if not multiple, discussions with his finance committee subcommittee, is to transfer $50,000 from the reserve fund to pay for the restructuring of the town's chart of accounts. Uh, after being on board for almost a year now, uh, he's found that the chart of accounts is maxed out and can't really have fit any expansion uh, or changes. Uh, so would like to actually expand the roles of the person who is doing uh, the Munis permissions work to also do this chart of accounts work. Uh, so he's asking for that to come from the report. Oh, I guess once it gets over 479. Okay, <laughs> uh, Gene? On the 50,000, so the dirt fund transfers have always, in my time with the finance committee, been items that were not foreseeable. Either when we were doing the budget in February, or when we did the budget last year. So like a vacation buyout, a sick file, things you don't see coming, right? We had to throw a heck of a lot of modulars over at Tom's and we didn't know that at the time. Um, <clears throat> why does this fall into that category? Like why didn't you just go through the budget process? I, I think that's a fair process. Uh, I guess the, the best I can answer is uh, the comptroller wasn't here for the establishment of the FY16. Uh, did not request this for the FY17 budget process when the budget was being formulated and submitted on January 15. Uh, brought it up with the Finance Committee subcommittee, and I don't want to speak for any of those members, uh, but at that point it was determined rather than adding it to the FY17 budget so late in the process, that pursuit of a, uh, excuse me, a reserve fund transfer would be an acceptable approach. Well, uh, I have the same question, but since I got answered, um, is there anyone from Subcommittee here who can say anything about what uh, what he said in your meeting? Uh, Charlie, yeah. or Brian, or what you? Go ahead. I mean, well, I, th this uh, was 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 coupled to the 
accounts receivable package, which was in process, as you know, during our the last fiscal year and this fiscal year. And there was a, they had to make a decision in that process of which, first of all, which new um, Unis version they were going to go to. There was a discussion of clouding. In other words, the, the existing Unis that we had wasn't going to support the new AR package. Okay? So they had to upgrade to something. There were two different choices. And they weren't able to make that decision in time for the budget cycle. And then once they made that decision, they could make a decision about the charter accounts. And they did discuss that with Brian. Yeah. Thank you. Brian, do you want to add anything to that? Or um, add another question? Not necessarily to add to it. I had another question. Um, he did mention to us when this was um, ongoing. Um, the, and we even talked about the chart of accounts. Is this work that's being done part of the actual, the, the, and this, this is my understanding, this is all part of the upgrade of the MUNIS system, not just the fact that he needs a new chart of accounts. This is all part of the upgrade. Uh, that's a question for you. So, well, I guess my understanding, it, it, it's yes and no. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very much related to the upgrade. It's, it's a good time to do it as these systems are being shifted, but my understanding <coughs> is that he also feels like whether or not we're going forward with MUNIS, he would be pursuing charter accounts. Perhaps it's best answered by saying the timing of it is related to the MUNIS receivables switch over, but the need would be there whether or not. Well, I understand that. It did, I guess what I'm asking is it's all part of the integration uh, of it at this point. I mean, that's, that's fair. That's okay. Okay, Alan and Jean. Is this basically just a renumbering of accounts or will we do some restructuring? Uh, for example, I remember the TAS report wanted us to handle you know, enterprise fund offsets different than things like that. Would there be any structural changes or is it just renumbering? My understanding is this in, its, in and of itself is renumbering. Uh, some of those uh, enterprise fund changes you're talking about are, like you said, kind of in the power of self report. We'll be addressing those as well. Uh, I, don't, I have to admit, I'm not sure that those will be sort of hard addressed in this chart of accounts. Okay, sure. I mean, I, we don't want to do, you know, pay this and then some more changes later. Sort of anticipating those changes and build them into this. I guess. Yeah, I think those those powers and solvent changes that you're speaking to are more policy changes than they are necessarily accounting changes, okay. and how we choose to budget as opposed to. I mean, it ultimately affects how we account for it, but I think it's yeah. again, it's budget policy. Mm -hmm. Gene, I, I guess just Adam, because the way you're answering the questions, um, how involved is the town manager's office in this project or proposed? So we, uh, the deputy town manager is very involved in the, in the entire Munis integration package. Uh, Sandy oh, just the charter of accounts part. Charter of accounts, I mean, Sandy will be involved, but it is the controller's work. I mean, Sandy will want to be part of it because as we put together our budget every year, the, the chart matters in terms of how we structure, well, right. structure the operating budget. Uh, but I, I would call, I'd call, you know, comfortable. Well, the only reason I ask, and besides the normal, like the question I asked before, is um, the school department changed their charter accounts like four years ago, and then subsequently told us that never to look back past those four years ever again because they can't figure it out between the old and the new charter accounts in a manner that I think is like ridiculous at times. Um, so I think. To, you see kind of where I'm getting at with that? Like, I don't want to be in a situation where we change the chart of accounts and then we're told that we have to disavow all knowledge of prior budgetary numbers because it's just not fair because that was Ruth's chart of accounts. Yeah, I, so I, you, know, you know what, I cannot firmly answer that, but I, I can commit to making sure that we don't have that problem. Okay. Now, how does this relate to the <coughs> chart of accounts? So you've got a separate transfer request um, for the 10 and the 50 gig. Um, I mean, the 10 is just a transfer from the controller salaries. Uh, the 50,000 from the reserve fund. So, could you speak to that? The difference between the two? Yeah, it, uh, were you speaking to both or were you just speaking yeah, to the 10? So, the, no, the, the 50 is the chart of accounts. Okay. The 10 is uh, role based permissions updating for the use of Munis. Uh, right now, the way it's been done for quite a while is you come in in whatever your job is and the comptroller, the comptroller staff structures out your Munis permissions uh, sort of ad hoc. All right, you're this clerk, 
we're going to give you this, this, and this. Instead, we want to build a system where if you're this clerk, your permissions are already set, and you're just assigned that clerk, or that treasurer collector, or that manager, or that whatever, whatever the title is, I think it would be a role-based permission uh, set, sort of, as a, as a standard that we have to work from. Okay, are there any other questions on the two controller transfers? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, turning the sheet, is the DPW Stone Ice Transfer. Uh, <coughs> we ended up 1,000, uh, excuse me, 100,000, uh, $143,047 over the FY16 uh, allocated budget. Uh, so we're requesting that those funds be transferred from the reserve fund as well. Uh, we do note here, as I'm sure the finance committee knows, uh, this year we have not, we will not have the need to raise any further deficit on the recap on FY17 staff. <coughs> This is the entirety of the deficit here. Any questions? All right, uh, the elections office is the next transfer you see listed, and that also is going to relate to a later town clerk transfer. Uh, this is in regards to funding the costs associated with next Tuesday's special election. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, the election budget covers the election workers and supplies uh, the polling places and all those professional services to get um, the actual polling places set up. The later, I might as well speak to it now if, if it's okay. The town sure. clerk's transfer is for $5,972. Uh, there's a detail of that, uh, actually the last page of the packet, uh, and that's for uh, the printing and coding that goes with creating the ballots and then actually coding the, the chips that count the ballots in the, um, in the, in the voting machines. Any question on the election transfers, either the selectman or the town clerk? Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, after elections, you see facilities. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, is not a reserve fund transfer, but rather a transfer from uh, salaries to expenses. Uh, based on some positions uh, being vacant for a good portion of the year, there was some uh, salary surplus available in the facilities uh, salary line item. So there were, uh, oh, there's always need in terms of facilities maintenance. So there is steam trap maintenance in town hall uh, that we want to perform. Uh, some work has already been done to the town hall entrance some carpet work at the Fox Library, and also some plumber supplies needed at the Fox Library. So we're looking for permission to move that 15,000 from salary to expenses and facilities. Any questions? Right. Human resources, uh, asking for transfer from the reserve fund of $18,410, and that is solely related uh, to the buyout costs of a long-term employee who recently retired. Questions? Okay. All right. Inspections. Uh, we are looking for a transfer of $61,405 from the reserve fund. Uh, this is really three-pronged. Uh, the majority of it is in relation to, once again, uh, the retirement of a, a very long-term employee, the electrical inspector retired. Uh, I think he, he has become the third longest serving and current serving in that town employees. We've been here quite a few years uh, and had a pretty significant buyout. In addition to that, <coughs> the building inspector had uh, medical absence this year, and in terms of paying for some temporary services to cover the office, uh, we're asking for uh, $5,400. Uh, right, right, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, and also, uh, some of you may recall uh, the, the very serious fire down at the Arizona Ranch, uh, Brookside Condominiums. Uh, we needed to pay for a third party architectural review uh, to judge structural stability and some of the decisions that the building inspection, uh, inspection services was making about the safety of the buildings. Uh, that was not a budget expense, so we're asking for that as part of this transfer. Okay, any questions? Try. Adam, um, <coughs> these uh, salary buyouts related to the days when the town was negotiating the city or vacation or something like that, and salary increases? Yeah, so this employee actually <coughs> had both of the deferred, uh, is that what you're speaking about? That? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So he had, he had been here, I think, some 37 years. So he had both deferred, accrued sick time, and uh, whatever his vacation and used at that point in his retirement. So, so as, as we move through the cohort of employees, is there going to be a change in the retirement transition costs? I, I mean, it, would, it will certainly start to go down given there's not even that many employees left in the books that have both or either of those deferrals coming to them. Um, yeah, sick time is now uh, capped at a quarter of what uh, you have on the books for sick time. And with the 
think it's four or five years now since uh, I think Finance Committee supported the town meeting passed uh, cutoff for vacation rollover of April 30th. So, frankly, people are smart enough to retire at a time opportune to them based on what they have in the books, but not allowing vacation time to roll over to a certain sort of occur as well. Thank you. Do we have any five percenters left? You know, I think um, they're not naming them. So there's the five percent for. Yeah, I think there's one or two. Left. Oh, um, yeah. Amazing. I think there are like ten still in the fire department. Really? That's from 1985. Oh, I think um, a good number of them You might have them from, from, from the two percent in '91 or '92. Um, you might have a few, few of them left for that. There were some that, that the chief has said will get 7%. Huh? So. Okay. I didn't think it was 10. I thought it might be 3 or 4. Wait, I, can, I can ask the chief. I think the chief might be one of them himself. <coughs> yes, the chief yeah, yes. The chief will be a very significant buyout when that happens. It's a big department. They could eat it. Yeah. Alan? The uh, Arizona ranch expenses will lose largely recovered by fees. No, so th this is a, you know, this was a complicated one with the need for the building inspector to make a decision of whether or not the building was structurally sound for not, not only for repairs to be made, but for people to go back in and um, claim their belongings. Uh, and, and, and people were doing that on sort of a rolling basis. So this, this was the building inspector, frankly, not wanting to have the sole liability of him and his staff being the only opinion on the structural stability. So using some third party review to to show us how the fee based Yeah, it's not. Okay, any, uh, next? Uh, next is uh, from the police department. Uh, this is moving money from police salary, $40,000 from police salary to police expenses. Uh, again, nothing uh, being requested to come from the reserve fund here. Uh, this is in relation to what has really been a, a number of uh, somewhat, sometimes large, sometimes smaller moves as the community safety building project has been uh, going through its phases. Um, the, the chief and his staff and uh, other office staff, have, the, the chief was in one place, but some offices actually moved a few times. There's been phone movement, there's been IT movement, there's been furniture movement, uh, temporary walls, temporary desks. So uh, some portion of this, uh, of, a, of a larger cost than this 40,000 has been borne by the capital budget, uh, but some of the more operating related, uh, you know, temporary expenses uh, the chief has been covering in his operating budget, and that's why he's asking for this here. ZBA, I guess. ZBA, uh, so this is related to <coughs> the, the position, there used to be a part-time position in the Board of Selectmen's office and a part-time position in the ZBA. Uh, when that long-time part-time position in the Board of Selectmen's office retired, which is what prompted that first transfer that we spoke about, uh, the Board of Selectmen, having jurisdiction over the Zoning Board of Appeals as well, decided to collapse those into one position. Uh, collapsing them into one, reclassifying the position, and then setting a, a salary amount, left the ZBA for their portion of that person's time $1,230 short. Any questions? Yeah, Paul? Is that accounted for in the 2017 budget? Yes, yeah, yeah. Budget back here. Any other questions? Okay, uh, information technology. Uh, so again, this is the, the late uh, addition here. So in terms of covering the programming expenses that are, were required to uh, make ICS, the town's current receivables package, be able to bill for the CPA, I think the committee probably recalls back in March, I believe there was a $24,000 transfer to cover consultants' costs to do that programming. There's been continual costs in regards to that programming, as well as the town's lead software developer, who does a lot of his work on, um, on ICS, uh, has been out sick for some time and is expected back later this month. Uh, so the same consultant has been brought in more often uh, to not only do some of the CPA work, but to back for a while. That employee has been out sick, uh, which is totals up to uh, David Good's request of 56,753 uh, to get him from now to the end of the fiscal year in the black. Brian. Um, is the CPA being billed for the work, for this work and everything else that went on during the first year? 
So we, um, I know, I, I believe it was you and uh, maybe Carolyn right. had brought to our attention that the statute that clarified that it was allowed. Yeah. We, we didn't have an article that allowed us to appropriate those funds from the special town meeting. So there's, there's no mechanism to appropriate the FY16. So the town lost 50,000, roughly. I mean, I, I, I suppose you could say that, but it's not lost money. I mean, the taxpayers paid the money. They, they would have paid for it if it was from the CPA fund or if they paid for it in the general fund. Now, I assume that the new collection system that's being purchased has this built in. <coughs> I verified that with David before I came. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> it sort of feels bad spending this. I said, I, I said, can I at least tell the finance committee that we just fix this? Okay, any other questions on that? Dean? I'd like to set a general question. Okay, any other questions on informational technology? Any general questions? <laughs> <laughs> Dean? A fire department? Not on the list. Isn't that amazing? So he, he continued this year as in some of the past years with, uh, with vacancies and the surpluses that has created being able to manage his overtime without needing uh, that many transfer. So I, I think it's worth noting um, for that. I, I guess I'll say maybe that's not this. So the reason we, we used to have my first general finance meeting, we used to have this meeting on um, end of year meeting before our end of year dinner, and then we stopped doing it because it seemed unsavory to yell at the then fire chief for his like constant four hundred thousand dollars or two hundred fifty thousand dollars running over budget and overtime and not managing his money before we ate. So we split it out here so we could yell at him at a different meeting. <laughs> um, and, and I think that's my way of saying that, you know, the, the fire department budget was a long problem for the, for the finance committee. I think we, it was not a good time to deal with it. Um, so I think, I think this chief has worked very hard over a lot of years to get this thing in line. And I remember when he first came on, it was, it's, it's been ratcheting down every year, right? It was a big number that's smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. I think it might have been a balance last year too, as well. So that's right. I, I don't think it, I think it's worth noting that that's a, it remains a significant accomplishment from where it was, you know, seven, eight years ago. I, I agree. He, he, the chief, uh, Chief Jefferson has done an exceptional job managing the department, managing this issue. He's also probably over the past three or four years been a great advocate for responsibly increasing the overtime budget when we set the budgets so that we're slowly chipping away and you know so managing on one side also budgetingly appropriate on one side so that you can start to reduce that need. Sure. Yeah, I think I'd like to file on there Chief Jefferson because uh, you know that we, we uh, rehabilitated two fire stations in the last several years and I don't remember the exact number but I know that this he's he's literally saved the town hundreds of thousands of dollars in that process by just clever management and buying and moving things around and so forth. So it's not just the overtime. Also true. Very true. Paul? And one other note is the chief has been keeping Daryl and me abreast with emails every month as to how the budget was going. And so he's uh, uh, doing all this transparently. Okay. Any other general thoughts? Okay, what I'd like to do now is um, rather than call all these separate votes, um, if you, I'm going to go down by order of the summary sheet and uh, just like Tommy, your moderator, um, if you want to hold something because you have an amendment or you want to um, I'll discuss it further, you'll hold. And then I'll just go down through it. We'll go back to the one that you want to discuss more. We'll do that as a vote. And then we'll vote the whole thing. So, uh, human services, inspections, facilities, elections. Town clerk, DPW, police, controller auditing, controller chart of accounts, 
Selectma, ZBA, Information Technology. Hold. Okay. Information Technology. Yes. Um, I think I, I, I just, I don't know, it's, it's sitting bad with me that we discussed this at length in our committees. We were given the wrong information by the CPA committee who said that they're not allowed to pay for these expenses directly. They told us that in when they came in and discussed their budget. Um, I, I will vote for everything except for the CPA money at this point. And I, I, it'd be, the town is actually going to lose those funds. The town is going to benefit by billing them in some form. And I think it, when an unforeseen expense comes up, if it has to come out of a reserve, even if it came as a reserve fund transfer that they have to reimburse next year to pay it back, that's one thing. But uh, I, I support everything else but that. Okay, now. Oh, is, is there, okay. Is there a mechanism to, would there be a mechanism to do that retroactively to the CPA order? Is it, and then by statute, it can only be paid in the first year. And, it's, and it's, all this was written into the CPA statute um, in the general laws. So the committee mis was misled, either through omission, error, or whatever. I'm not saying it's deliberate. Um, but we had that opportunity in March to correct this. Yeah, I mean, for, for what it's worth, Brian, I, I fully agree that the statewide coalition gave bad advice to the committee. That is, and then I, we, we could have or should have done more homework ourselves, but that is 100% that is accurate. Now, the CPA costs, these were costs that the town has incurred. So if we don't transfer this, there will be a deficit in that account. If, yes, if we don't transfer this, the IT will end in the red, absolutely. Right. Is there any way, and there's no way for the CPA to retroactively reimburse the town for that? So the, the CPA doesn't really have any FY16 appropriations at all. And that, that time has come and gone with the FY16 special town meeting. So they have no cash until July 1. They have no appropriations. They have no... Well, they don't have any cash. We could they don't have Okay, so cash has come in. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's been collected, absolutely. But they don't have an appropriation. Correct. So there's no way for them to pay. And this closes out on June 30th. They can't spend any money until July 1. Is there any way to, can you think of any creative way for them to reimburse us? I mean, I guess the, the best thing I can say without promising more than I, than I can, can get from the CPA committee is uh, there's been a, there had been some dialogue about whether or not they would hire and create their own staff or use existing town staff. And I had been talking with the chair of the CPA and using both uh, the yet to be hired new management analyst in my office and also the, the assistant town manager, because those positions are new and yet, uh, not, well, one's new, one's unfilled, uh, the chair's interpretation has been that next year we will be able to use CPA funds to offset portions of the costs of those salaries, which otherwise would have been wholly supported by the general fund. I know it is not a direct fix to what you're depicting, but it, it will at least take some pressure off the general fund that we weren't otherwise expecting. But you know that's what I'm trying to support. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, are you making a motion on that of, of no action? No, I'm not, no, I'm not going to hold it. Okay. I know it's going to happen. Okay, in that case, uh, um, we have 360,657 coming out of the reserve fund, 10,000 from controller salaries, 40,000 from police, and 15 from facilities. Uh, on that, do I have a motion? So Do I have a second? Sure. Okay, any discussion? Any further discussion, I should say. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank you.
here that there will now be 52,750 left in the reserve fund. Is that the updated number after these latest additions? So the, the chairman and I were just going back and forth. We have about a $9,000 discrepancy, but it's uh, he has 61,000. I have the 52. We will we'll fix that discrepancy. But yes, that incorporates everything okay. past today. And for comparison's sake, I took a quick look. Last year, the reserve fund ended up with $19,000, and FY14 it ended up with uh, $54,000. So considering 550,000 was for the Thompson modulus, which is obviously a very singular large expense, uh, it's actually pretty good relative performance as well. The winter helped. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you can just give me a second while I hand all these over. Uh, while we have the manager trapped in this room, uh, do you have any questions for the manager? Brian. Um, the five-year plan and all these overrides, is, have you guys revised it at all for um, the potential? And um, basically, I think all the schools will pass without much difficulty, especially from what I've seen in the paper and everything. Um, my issue is going to be, and I'm worried about, um, the override after that, the general operating fund, um, or, or the general fund just in its day-to-day -day operations going forward is going to need an immense override. And I'm looking at this and I see it somewhere on the order of $17 million, which right now is alone is 17% of the total tax take that we're bringing in. So the, the most recent iteration or update is the plan that was included in the Finance Committee's report to town meeting. And it is, that is the document that speaks to the potential of the need for an override currently projected for FY 2021. So we, we ran last year through the long-range planning process, starting in the fall through the spring, really more than dozens of scenarios that looked at overrides in FY 20, early overrides in FY18, that would be lower in amount, but would obviously raise the taxation before you need it and continue to put it in the bank. Uh, so, you know, I, I, we, we, we did a brief uh, informational forum at the Senior Center yesterday uh, in regards to the debt exclusions, and the question came up, you know, this, this isn't it, right? Uh, and, you know, you have to say that there's, if we're fortunate enough to get through the MSBA process and have a selected project, there will be an, a high school construction question for a debt exclusion. Uh, there's the possibility of a Hardy question, depending on what enrollment uh, figures look like in Hardy. And then in the future, there will certainly be an override question that's contemplated. I think the big question today, or the two questions are the when and how much. And the how much is gonna be very strongly dictated by spending decisions that the community makes. Well, like I said, I, I personally, I believe all the school, the schools will pass. Um, I'm, I don't know the numbers for the high school, I don't think anybody does, but you can look, in, you can look into it and say, okay, it's gonna be in excess of 200 million. Um, do they have an idea as to what, um, in general right now, uh, if it were to happen, what the reimbursement rate would be? Just, you know, a ballpark? So, you know, if I was going to guess, I would say it's gonna be 45%. Okay. Um, so, you know, based on that, we're going to end up probably on, once you put equipment and everything else in the school, you probably, I assume we're going to be looking at about $140 million, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe 130 and I don't, you know, I don't want to split here at 10 million. Uh, I, I, frankly, there. the figure, when, when citizens have asked me, I, I use the figure of 150 million. Yeah. And I have some, okay, some there. And I think all that will pass. And uh, the debt exclusion is one thing, but what really scares me, like I said, is the operating budget, because that's that's going to make everything else pale <laughs> because we're going to have to pay for everything once we got it, once we have it built. Uh, you're absolutely yeah. right. And you're absolutely can't argue. Okay, yeah, uh, so uh, maybe this is on coattails of what Brian just said. Uh, I got a question. It's mainly the one out on the boat safe place to leave today. Does this originate in the, in the town medical office or is it? Is that, that I believe is from the private campaign. Yeah. I gotta say, boy, I just felt my, uh, my blood boiling a little bit when I read the question one, question two, question three, just the way that it was worded. And if 
I want sitting in on this committee, uh, I think it's a little bit of pulling the wool over the taxpayer and the voters' eyes because, first of all, question one is fine. Overcrowding, the return of the Gibbs school to alleviate the middle school overcrowding situation makes sense. Uh, question two, Arlington High School, $2 million for a feasibility study. And, we, and, and then it goes on to say that tens of millions of dollars will come from the state for the future building project. And then lastly, the Minutemen Technical High School, a rebuild of 32 million. People are going to vote on this next week. And I just think that, you know, it would have been great to disclose in question two that there was going to be a $150 million cost to the high school, but the two million is just for as it says, just for a feasibility study. But I think if the voter, if a voter knew that there's 29 million for Gibbs and then 150 plus or minus million for a new high school, they might have second thoughts about whether to vote 32 million for a new Arlington's contribution to the minimum high school. So, that's all I want to say. It's just, I just think the wording is sort of a little bit, on the, a little bit clever for me. For, I mean, from from my position, <coughs> the first time I saw that is when it came through my mail slot oh. at home. I, well, so, I, without not to criticize or you know support or criticize, I. Yeah. Well, not here, so. Preaching to the choir, right? Any other questions for the manager? You want a tree cut down or something like that? <laughs> You know, I, about two years ago, the town, uh, after they replaced the pipes in my area, yeah. they put new streets in and new curves and fixed the sidewalks and so forth. And I thought they did a fantastic job. And, and I've seen another neighborhoods in the town, too. However, I have noticed that at the corners where the handicap ramps are, and there's a, sort of a cement uh, triangle or something like that in there, uh, in more than one location, I've seen that that cement is cracking. Uh, you know, so in most of these places, it just it's not. not it hasn't been there for years. And I don't know if there's uh, too much sand in the cement. When it's the cement manufacturing. Is it cracking or spalling? Yeah. Both. Okay. My experience has been that spalling is easier to go after in terms of potential quality problems with yeah. the cement or the concrete. Um, cracking, I think it's tougher to track, you know, fault. But I can, is it, so the whole Brandwood, Kensington area? Yeah, but I've also seen it in other places. Uh, I, uh, that's the one that I noticed. I'll bring it, I'll bring it up to my Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I have another question. Who would I ask about, I live in East Arlington on Lafayette Street, and all of the commuters from Alewife that don't want to pay, they park on our street, and we've called We've called the police, our landlady, neighbors, everyone's complained, but there, is there anything that can be done? Who would I contact about that? So ultimately it's the Board of Selectmen who are the parking commissioners. Right. And it's been, it's been, you know, since I've been here, an ongoing issue, and I'm sure most of you who have been here for longer than me would agree. So it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a constant, it's been a constant problem. Yeah. And there hasn't necessarily been the traction to put sort of a full-blown resident parking permit process in place. Um, so I, I think, you know, a, 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 a multitude of voices coming to the selectmen could start to okay. determine that. That's good to know. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Anything else? Okay, Mr. Manager, thank you very much for coming. You're uh, so you owe me three of those. Okay. Great. Cannot get those done. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. You're right. welcome to hang around if you'd like. The drama of who's next year's chairman. I'm sorry? The drama of who's next year's chairman. <laughs> we'll see. Thank okay, you. the next on the agenda is election of officers. So with that, I will turn it over to our fine Executive Secretary Gordon. Oh, this is well, your chance to maintain a code. <laughs> <laughs> Of offices for 2017. Um,
Tosti would like to remain as chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So, Al, you have the pleasure of being the chairman of the Finance Committee for 2017. Can we do it for life? Now for our vice chairs. Uh, Dick Fanning, Charlie Foskett, and Alan Jones. Um, yes. I wish to withdraw my name. Oh. I will stay if nobody else wants it, but. Okay. <laughs> 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 Would you, okay. Dick, would you be willing to stay for one more year so yeah. the committee has a chance to sure, uh, consider? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. okay. His motion's withdrawn, but uh, I'll, I'll have some comments later. Okay, so um, all those, uh, I need a motion. Do I have a motion for Dick Fanny? Jolly Foskett and Alan Jones as our vice chairs for 2017. So moved. So second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? No. And so, our vice chairs, 2017. Thank you. And our recording secretary, Peter Howard. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 I think of all the committees, we have we've never gotten a question about getting our minutes up uh, when they were due. Uh, okay, a few other uh, thoughts. One is uh, Dean's usual motion on transfers during the uh, summer and fall when the Finance Committee is not in a uh, meeting, which is... Oh, I move that the chair and vice chair, the chair with the approval of one vice chair have the authority to make the transfer. Second. We're not around. Okay, we, we usually put caps. I know, 25 grand. 10 grand by the chair with the permission of two out of the three vice chairs, 25,000. The, Dick, the chair can do 10,000 by himself. Yep. And 25 for chair and two vice chair. Okay. 25 is better. Okay, any, any uh, questions on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, I, I've been planning this trip out west for like three years now. <laughs> uh, and, and I think uh, I'm finally going to get to do it, which means I'm gone uh, from early, um, early August to early October. And uh, um, well, you can do a lot with email and cell phones and all that kind of stuff. Uh, trying to do this trapping through the uh, Banff. Uh, forests uh, can be a little difficult. Therefore, uh, while I'm away, uh, um, I appoint uh, Charlie Foskett as uh, acting chair of the committee for those two months. Uh, the last thing uh, is uh, please get your dinner choices to Dick. <laughs> we'll see you all in two weeks. And with that, is there any other business of the committee? Yeah, Paul. Will our next meeting be back at Community Safety? No. I, um, the manager <laughs> talked to me, and what do you think, Charlie? I don't know what the status is. Yeah. Well, Gloria, keep an eye on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think they should not spend any money, so I don't know if I haven't been over there. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be over there, because I hate this, uh, the acoustics in this place. And hopefully they fixed the heat. The heater system, so, oh, yeah. you know, we're not all on it. Yeah. 
Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, question. Kelly, do you know how far the building is along? It's supposed to be finished. They trans I mean they transferred money out of that project into yeah. the schools. Oh, they, oh, right. So I mean it, it was due to be finished yeah. at the end of this fiscal year. I think they're back there. All the okay. signs that were pointing to the other building are gone. I think they're in there. Uh, yeah, you don't know what's inside. You know, yeah, that, that's the thing. That's the, that's the thing. That's always been the thing. Okay, so uh, we will try very hard uh, to get back to the O'Neill Road. Uh, uh, you know, at our next meeting. Okay, any other business or questions? Meeting adjourned.